So I have freed all the three tanks now and removed some of the insulation. The pressure tank is also out and I cut the pipe down there and hooked up to a hose and that is to be able to empty the tanks from water and the reason for that is because I'm going to extend both that pipe and the pipe in the bottom and also the pipe in the top to the two other tanks that will be fitted in this corner here. Um, the pressure tank will have to be standing roughly here in this area here and it will be a tight fit to the new wooden machine itself and that's because the new stuff are bigger. I have also been able to actually pull out the old stove or the old uh, wooden machine uh, just a bit at least. Uh, I will drag it out to the door a little bit later on here and by doing that I will be able to lift it out with the machinery. The old one will of course be sold as second hand stuff and hopefully I get a couple of bucks for it and that will at least pay for some of the pipings that I need for new stuff. The old stove itself have exactly the same height for the pipe in the back as the new one have and that's really good because I don't have to do much work here. But on the other hand I need to sort this plates out here that is actually shielding it off a little bit. I will have to go back here and seal this one up and I will be sealing it up with the same sort of junk that we have up here that is for actually sealing um, this kind of things. The new one will actually be using 35 millimeter copper pipes instead of our pipes and uh, the old one here is 28 but I will only be changing out the 35 between the, the, the ladder mat here and the stove uh, and to the pipes, to the tanks itself, I will still be keeping the 28 millimeter. I have the steel pipes here that they are from the old installation, but I need to connect together again. As you can see here, you have this press fit or clamp fit where you have an O-ring inside. I don't have that type of tools. I'm going to use this uh, screw clamp thing from Vatet. This one is actually out of brass and made for copper pipes but they actually say that this type can be used to this type of pipes as well. But to do that I need to prepare this pipe a little bit first. So basically when you have a newly cut pipe, um, when you have copper pipes, I will be showing that later on, you need to remove the burr. Um, but on an iron pipe like this one I just use a file first of all and walk all around it to clean out the edge. It's important that you do not touch the surface here with scratch that way. Never ever have scratches that way because it will leak. So you go around and make sure you have no burr. When that's done I take a file And do the inside as well, make sure that it is nice and dandy. Last thing is I take my setting paper, wrap it around and just twist it around back and forth like this. Doing that I will only create scratches around the surface and that's because otherwise you may get leakages around the scratches that way. This is actually really good to do. Especially on copper pipes, I do recommend it. Uh, I know that some people say that it's not necessary. I'm trained to do it that way. The press fit or the screw fit itself consists of the outer part, and you have this ring, and you have the screw part. So basically, in general, you have that on, you have that on, and then you press this one on. And that one have a small indent inside that should sit 
right up to it. If it doesn't stick like that, you will not get this flush enough. And then you have this one and you screw this on in place. Seal this up, I'm using this Loctite uh, sealant for piping. I do like it, it works great. So basically we need to have this here. Yeah, I really, I always apply a little bit of this into the edge first. And we just tuck that around. This dries really fast in this And the instruction says two more turns of this after it is finger tight. So that's a lot. Um, and you basically need to really tight this up. So I'm going to turn this around because it's a little bit easier for me to tighten. Somewhere around there. So this should basically work. And you cannot remove it. And I just turn this on. Time to add this back to the boiler again. And I'm first going to add some sealer. I do like this one. It works great and it has been working great for me. So just several laps. And then I go back with the Loctite again. All to make sure that we don't have any leaks and we have to redo any of the screws in. Because they are in tight spot. This is basically where it should be. When it comes to this wooden boiler setup, we need to order a bunch of things to get this working. And what we need to figure out is the boiler itself, what I need to connect that to the existing system. And here I sketched on building a new set of pipes between the boiler and the thermostat and the pump. Uh, I didn't go with that in the end. I instead went with three of these couplers here. They are very very expensive uh, but they will be working so I can connect together the original system for the boiler so I will keep that one. And that saves me time. It doesn't save me much money uh, but it saves me some time. So basically we have the two new tanks here that I need to connect together. And we have the bottom line here, the top line and the air line in top. The bottom line need converters between the 25 millimeter uh, outlet here to a piping outlet and that one is actually this here. Uh, I have some parts here. Uh, 25 to copper pipe 28 and then I need bend and a T as well. So basically we have the Bend there, and we have the T here. Uh, so we need two sets of those. The top end itself is a little bit different because in the top end I need the air ventilation pack and I'm using 15 millimeter copper pipe for that. So what I basically do in the top is that I screw in this iron changer from uh, I think it is one inch to half inch. 
And then I use this coupler here uh, in top attaching the pipe itself and that goes to the air valve that keeps this system free from air. Um, so that's basically the main thing. We have another thing that we need to consider and that's how we actually get the system up and running in a decent way. And if we have the area where I have all the things like this, I now have three tanks like this. I have the boiler here and I'm going to position the new tanks like that. Uh, that means I have the outlets here and here. My current tanks are hooked up like this. So I need to pull a line between those two and I'm actually going to just hook it up like that. This is not the optimal scenario when it comes to the water being flowing correctly. Um, but with that said, I can control the water with um, tools for actually, or couplings that can set the amount of water flowing in or the, or the resistance in the water flow on the bottom end. And by doing that, I can actually see or get it, the water to flow as I want. I will be measuring all the temperatures that digitally, of course. Um, when I pick out the water itself for the heating, I currently pick it out at this area here. So that can cause an uneven um, gather, gathering of the wa hot water, since it is split among those three. Um, that will be tested later on. If that doesn't work, I take the bottom part and draw it here, and take the top part here. Because when you have tanks like this, connected together, you generally want, actually, when you have three tanks, this is even more important. Uh, you have the water mixer here, that goes out to your radiators. You need to take the hot water from one end, like here, and then you mix it with the cold water from this end here. And that is to get an even flow between the all the tanks. Uh, so this scenario here is not optimal. We'll see how this works out in the end. Um, I have seen systems like this working just perfectly fine, so I hope it will work for me as well. I have now been to the store and I bought tons of things. Soldering stuff, screwing stuff, everything that should be needed to get this system together. So it's now time to actually work on it. I did buy a couple of pipes as well, just as a reserve. I do have a lot of pipes already on the floor, but in, in case I have that. We now have the bottom end pipe in here, and this one is soldered before, I'm not sure, I think this is low temp solar, so I most likely destroyed it, we'll see about that. I need to do this bend because of the outer tank, it's in a way here, so I need to have this strange curvature. So we're going to um, get this together now, uh, high temp solar, 700 degrees, and we'll see how it goes. So before we go any further in this installment of this new boiler, um, as always the camera battery dies when I need it the most, but I went ahead a little bit. As you can see I have the boiler in place and uh, I got and used the original pipings here to the ladder mod. This is normal 35mm pipes uh, and they are pressed 
together and I'm going to use those couplers in three different points to get them together. Uh, other than that I had to cut a hole here um, also a little bit in down below there as you can see uh, I will cover this up with new sheeting soon it's not a big issue I had to redo the piping in this end as well um, shorten this and I am using the original here um, and with this one so I need to solder everything up here uh, I did the same thing down here as you can see I cut it off here shorten it in same with this one and fitted it to the ladder mat uh, correct angle and everything so that should be fine the pro uh, I'm going to add the tanks in this area or in this space here so basically I have cut this apart a T-joint uh, this is not soldered together yet and when soldering stuff this close to a screw fitting you need to put inserts inside I will show you that later on it's very very important um, same done down below uh, T-fitting as well and a new one um, this was the old one that was sitting here so I have the new one here uh, I will also be fitting some kind of extension here that I connect to the actual expansion tanks so I will be doing that and that will be put out here um, that part will be a screw fitting as well and should be able to turn it off without a problem in the top here I have the air ventilation part I removed that one and I have created a couple of new pipes here for that uh, that one fits in that one goes to the new tank this one goes to the expansion part that is this one and I have one manual here and one automatic will be sitting here so it's two for air uh, they will be sticking out outside the tank space of course You can see that I have put the insert here uh, it's really important to have it on um, areas where you solder this close to the end because this end will be very soft unless you harden it e harden it in this case would be that you heat it up uh, and fast cool it very fast and then it will become hard again kind of um, those here have not been hardened uh, so they are pretty soft you can almost press them in together it's not a big deal but you need to do it on most of the pipes and uh, therefore I have to do it I add this coupling because uh, I am preparing it now and this cone is a new cone as well because I have done it redone it and then I'm ready to tie it up again I have already added cones to this one and that one inside there uh, it's a little bit strange situation with uh, all the bends here but I will show you more of that later and the reason why I have done it um, but now it's time to pull this part up again and we are actually going to solder that joint and that joint on site here um, but before we do that we need to solder together some of the other joints here uh, so that I don't have that much to solder This bottom part here is now sorted in some way or another. Um, it's a little bit funny bends and I know there are plumbers out there that will complain like crap over this. Um, that is not best practice and everything. 
the, the, the pipes that do matter, they are bended properly, so that's not a problem. The pipe going up here, that you can see with a funny bend, is because I did turn that the other way around, and I couldn't bother replacing the joint and do it in the other way. Um, so I left it as this. It's just an expansion pipe. This expansion tank earlier, this one was standing straight up. Uh, I will now be laying it down in this direction and the reason for that is that I want to take this smaller tank and stand on, on top of that one and to do that I need to build some kind of um, place to have it on. Uh, this smaller tank here have its inlet outlet on the side so it's pretty easy to just take this pipe and going around and hook it up like that. To build a stand for this I found that I have a lot of these types of pipes lying around. Uh, that they are from an old tables. And they, the height of them are exactly above this part here. And they are rather thick as well because they are 2mm thick. So if I do a triangle inside there, one there, one there and one there, and then a, some side kind of thing on top, it should work perfectly right. This one will be standing a little bit closer to the corner than this one does and that's because we have the cat hole there. The boiler side, I have two things to hook up as well that I haven't hooked up yet and that this pipe here, that's the flow pipe for the cooling system and also the over pressure pipe that goes out here. They will go out on that side down into the drain and that's the last thing I'm going to hook up. I have hooked up the water here on the inlet for the emergency cooling and it goes around there, bend, bend and a bend and in here. So that's a little bit tricky around but uh, utilizing what I have and the space I have and that should do it. This pipe will be isolated in some way just to protect it from the exhausts here. Basically most of the systems are installed now. As you can see behind me I have expansion tanks and I have everything around here actually fitted them together. Before you start to actually use the system or fill the system with the water, it's recommended to pressure test the system. You need to find every leak and of course generally you have a leak or two when you do it at home, especially I'm an amateur so I'm I'm said to have leaks. To do that, first of all you need to fill the system with air and I made up this hose here uh, connected to one of the um, pipes here, the outlets and I'm just pressurizing it by having my compressor to blow in air into the system and currently I have filled the system with somewhere around 0.2 bar. Uh, you should not have to fill it much more than that. Um, when you have done that you go and pick your favorite bottle with some uh, soap and water and you start to spray every coupling you have and either listen or watch for bubbles. Generally you hear it when you have 0.2 bar of bulb you will hear it hiss if you have a bigger leak. So I'm just walking around now and checking and as I can see here for instance I have a leak between uh, it's bubbling quite a lot and that's because this one is not tied yet. I have not tied this coupling up at all uh, I, and I know about it. Uh, couplings is generally not a problem, you can always tie them up later on. So now I'm going through and checking everything. The couplings here are a little bit trickier because they are glued together. Uh, they should be tied, that one will be o-ring sealed. Now I'm going through every one that I have soldered. And there we have one leak. There you can see the bubble. 
So basically here I have one solar joint that is leaking that I need to sort out. So I'm now going to go through everything else. And I Pressure testing is now done. I did find a couple of spots that had issues with leaks. This one here, uh, I have forgotten the sealant between. Uh, so I added an o-ring here because it's a flat surface. I had one solar joint down there that was leaking, that sorted as well. And I had one um, o-ring missing on the ladder mat as well, that sorted too. And that's basically it. It's as good as it should be now as I can see. I have no more leak. I have tightened some of the spots that had some minor, but other than that nothing. So now we need to prepare those two tanks. Uh, they need to have a pre-pressure before you actually start filling with water. And I have 8 meters from this level to the highest level of my radiators. And therefore these tanks should be uh, pre-pressured with 0.8 bar. So we need to check that out. So now it's actually time to fill this up. I have my well, the, the latch here opened, that is filling everything. And this one is op uh, closed currently. And uh, this one will be open later on because this one is actually supplying the boiler as well. But this one is so hard to turn so I'm just using this. So we are now filling it with water and this will take a couple of hours of course. And I will keep looking for leaks meanwhile. Today we will end this video here with the build as is and you will see in the next video where we actually go through, start the boiler up itself, go through the different parts and actually get everything back together with full insulation and make sure that we also have the monitoring up and running again with the temperature sensors. So I would like to thank you for today for watching this video and if you liked it don't forget to press the thumbs up. If you want to see me rebuild this boiler, install the screen and those things, mention it in the comments as well. And stay tuned for the next video.